When you have loved ones or friends who need help handling their daily affairs, whether they are elderly or disabled, relatives or neighbors, and you believe they need a guardian to handle those affairs, and when all other alternatives aren't realistic or have not worked, it often becomes necessary to file what is called an interdiction in the Louisiana court system. In Louisiana, the legal term for a guardianship of an adult is called an interdiction. Your friend or relative is referred to as the potential interdict. The person appointed to be the guardian is called the curator. In addition, the court appoints what is called an under curator who has certain oversight duties. Video number four. What are the duties of the curator of property? As the curator over the property of an interdicted person, you have a very significant legal responsibility to make sure that you're always acting in the best interest of the interdict. Uh, for example, the interdict owns a $300,000 home. Can I sell the house to myself for 50 bucks? No, you absolutely cannot do anything that benefits yourself and injures the interdict. You have what is known as a fiduciary duty. The fiduciary duty requires that you zealously, diligently, and honestly guard the property of the interdict and champion the interdict's rights. If you are in any kind of conflict with the interdict, if you've put yourself in a position where there is a conflict of interest between what is good for the interdict versus what is good for you personally, don't do what's good for you. Do what is good for the interdict. It's very unusual. Uh, it banks are fiduciaries, trust companies, but just ordinary people, it, it takes some getting used to. Mama wanted you to have the car, but now that you've been named as the curator over the property, you can't give yourself the car. You can ask the court for authorization to sell it to yourself for an amount of money that the Kelly Blue Book says is reasonable. A Acting as the curator over the property, it's not an invitation to a big garage sale and you can take everything the interdict has. It's quite the opposite. There is an under curator who is looking out at the actions you're taking. If the things you do are not in the best interest of the interdict, the under curator can come to court and say, hey judge, something fishy is going on here. Would you please look into it? As the curator of the property, you're required to post a bond for the, to secure your service. The bond is typically the value of all of the cash accounts plus a little extra. Selling a house is very difficult. Emptying a bank account can happen very, very quickly. The idea of the bond is to secure, to, to be sure there are funds available if uh, something goes wrong and you move to Tahiti with all of the interdict's money, the interdict can go against the bond and try to be made whole financially. Even though the curatorship over the interdict's property, it, it is a very emotional job where it is a close loved one and someone that you've cared for for a long time, but the curatorship is entirely, it's all about the business. 
you should have a very good record keeping arrangement. Uh, it, copies of checks, copies of bills, be sure that everything is logged in, balance the accounts on a very regular basis. It, be, it, treat this not as good as you treat your own business, treat it a little bit better. As the curator over the property of an interdicted person, you're going to be required to file annual accountings with the court. It could be more often, but at the very least, once a year, you need to let the court know, here are the assets that we started with. There's the house, there's the car, here's the checking account. Here are things that happened during the year. We paid this bill, we paid that bill, we got the termite inspection. Whatever all happens, show it in the annual report and let the court know what is left at the end of the reporting period. If you have gotten court approval and authorization to sell the interdict's home, okay, the money didn't magically d disappear, show the court the house was worth $200,000 and now there's $200,000 in the interdict's bank account. It, it is very important to keep as good a records as possible. Two or three days go by and you start to lose what actually happened. Putting it on paper immediately it avoids any kind of, of issues like that. You're gonna want to keep all of the bank statements that come in for this account you have separately set up for the interdict. The account is something that only you as the curator should ever be able to access. You don't want an account that you as the curator for the interdict and also two or three adult children or siblings, you, you can't control what anyone else does. You're entirely responsible for the interdict's funds and you need to be the only one with access to them. Now, you, you have taken over as the curator of the property what if the interdict is in a significant amount of debt? There's credit cards one, two, three, and four. They owe a mortgage. There is a car note. Are you, as the curator, you've got all these responsibilities. Do you have to come out of your own pocket to pay the interdict's bills? Short answer is no. The interdict's property is his, all of his pluses and all of his minuses, those are his to say grace over. You as the curator, you're in charge of making sure everything gets paid or arrangements are made for it, but you're not going to be looked to to come out of your own pocket to pay for his MasterCard bill. On a very similar note, Clients are often very concerned. You know, sometimes daddy can get a little out of hand. What if he injures someone? You remember that time he took the baseball bat and tore the windows out of the car? If he does that now that he's interdicted, am I responsible for it? Again, the short answer is no. You have an obligation to be sure that if he has a baseball bat, you should put it away from him. As the curator of the property, you don't want to encourage bad acts, but you are not personally responsible unless you've taken a much larger role. If, if you're out there beating up the car with dad, yeah, you've got some personal liability. Otherwise, be sure you've paid the insurance and anticipate that folks are going to sue you, but not you personally. They're gonna sue you as the curator of the guy with the baseball bat. When you are placed in charge of the interdict's property, take some time, figure out a budget to the extent that you're able to tell 
what the regular expenses are. Go ahead and plan for those. Uh, make If there are additional funds available that the interdict will not need for his or her care, uh, consider investing those funds with court approval in a court approved investment. It's, it's a good rule of thumb to consider if you need to do something big and important, you need to get the court to authorize it. If you want to sell the 10,000 shares of Amazon and buy something different, get the court to say that's okay. If you want to sell the vehicle, get the court to say it's okay. If you want to sell the house, get the court to say it's okay. Any action that you take that potentially could damage the interdict, he doesn't have a house, he's lost his car. He didn't lose it, the court said you could sell it. The ability to, uh, to control the property of the interdict, it is a huge responsibility and always, whatever you do, it should be with the best interest of the interdict in mind. The power that is granted to the curator of the property is, is significant, but there are also a lot of folks watching over the proceeding, keeping their eye on the curator to be sure things are done appropriately. One, the, the most immediate person is the under curator. If the curator wants to sell the interdict's home, for example, if the under curator thinks that is a bad idea, then someone mentions it, to the under curator is obligated to tell the judge that they think it's a terrible idea and you shouldn't sell the house for this, that, and the other reason. The curator, you're going to want to keep your lawyer pretty close by while you're doing these things. Uh, go to court, convince the judge that selling the house makes sense. Maybe the judge will find that selling the house leaves the interdict without a place to go and the judge does not want to authorize it. We can't guarantee the outcome, but we do know that if you follow the process, you keep you, you keep yourself good with the court and you stay out of trouble. The curator over an interdict's property has tremendous power, huge responsibilities. It reminds me of one of my favorite movies from the 90s, the Walt Disney animated version of Aladdin, where Robin Williams is playing the genie. And the genie has all of these huge powers but also this itty bitty living space. And a curator has monstrous powers and also very, very tightly controlled access, reporting requirements, people looking over their shoulder. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of responsibility. It's a very important job. Do your very best at it. Thank you so much for your time. Explore other resources available in attached PDFs and do your best. A supporting PDF document of video number four is available at the Governor's Office of Elderly Affairs website, goea.la.gov. For next steps, go to video number five. What can I expect in the court process?